Hey everybody, it's Gil here with Selling Vessel Dream Chaser, and as you can see by the scenery behind me, I am traveling this week. In last week's episode, we went ahead and insulated and wired and ultimately put up the new salon ceiling. This week, we tackled ductwork in the V-berth, the double bunk, and the salon. We needed to correct some of the problems we had and kind of show you how we went about determining what we needed to do and the path we ended up choosing. Hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. Today, we're going to finally do some ductwork. Since we bought this boat, there was very little ductwork. Essentially, the air conditioner in the central salon had one vent that went in the salon, one that went into the galley, and another one that actually just discharged below the bed in the double bunk room. So, did essentially nothing. Nothing in the V-berth. And now that it's been cold, poor chastity has been saying, it's really cold up here. So, today we're going to sort of explore our options. I'm going to give a bit of credit to Onboard Lifestyle. Um, if you've seen any of Teal's videos, they're redoing their catamaran. And my gosh, the guy's done a ton of work on it. And it looks amazing. Uh, but one of the things I saw him doing in a forced air heater was using PVC pipe as his vent work. Lightweight PVC. Uh, not the heavy Schedule 40 stuff or Schedule 80 or whatever you would use in house for plumbing, but more like drainage type. Um, I thought it was a great idea. Reduces cost, easy to run, simple to cut and install, um, and we need to do some of that work. So let me show you what we have and what we're hoping to accomplish here. So we are in the lower salon, and you can see the, the vent work here. I've got everything pulled apart so it's exposed. Uh, but you can kind of see this vent that just came up into the cupboard and never actually had a nice vent grate or anything else. Uh, let me kind of show you what this looks like down below. So here's the unit. And on the right-hand side here is essentially a distribution box. It looks like a bit of a homemade one, just a wooden-style distribution box that let all the forced air go into that box and then distribute into three different vents. Um, Two of them you can see go right here, one into the salon, one goes into the galley there. And the other one, which I have sort of pulled up, is this one that went across this settee that I have disassembled through the bulkhead and into the berth right there. So we are going to see what we can do here. But like most jobs, it starts with cleaning up. Um, this is a, a settee seat that actually pulls out into a double bunk. Uh, and there was just, you know years and years and years of sort of dirt and crud in the crevices of it so we're pulling it all apart um, and cleaning it first so i need to connect the new duct worker pipe from that connection all the way over here to where it goes through the bulkhead. Um, so I need to get a couple more ends like this that are um, male to male. That's a male to female. And the male to male one should let me connect it right up to the four inch PVC pipe. So I think this is what we're gonna go for here. And over on this end, I'm gonna need a long sweeping 90 degree angle, two sets of metal rotating ones. Another sweeping 90. Work. What you got there, baby? I've got uh, real duct tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is HVAC metal tape as opposed to duct D-U-C-T tape as in like the, well, you know, bailing wire and duct tape. I'm practicing my yoga poses. All right. So we have the first piece of rigid venting in, and we still have to tape around this side by the air conditioner from the PVC to the junction box. We've made a little bit of progress here. It's tough to film this. I, I probably should have taken the time to do it, but frankly, it's been so long coming for this. We just wanted to kind of get it done. So I'll show you what I'm doing a couple different places as opposed to all the steps not a lot of toughness to this, right? I mean, the reality is you're fitting PVC together. We're screwing a screw, a set screw into it. We're taping it up with that metal HVAC tape and that's it. So let me kind of show you what we did with the, you saw in the salon earlier, the uh, rigid PVC comes back here through this particular aft bulkhead in this particular uh, stateroom. And then right here behind me uh, in this cabinet, you can see the vertical um, PVC pipe right here. I think you can see it. You can see the vertical PVC pipe, and the purpose behind that is to bring air up as high as we can. The vent is going to be very close to up the ceiling right here by the port, and there is a Y right there that's also now going to go forward. And the reason we wanted to do that is 
you know, typically you want um, you want air vents that blow cold air high, right? Because cold air sinks, so you want it to come out high and drop down on the living area. Uh, you typically want heat vents low that comes out low near the ground and the heat rises. At the end of the day, we intend to be in more warm temperatures than um, than cold temperatures. So for us, it was more important to have the vents high for the air conditioning. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting them up as high as we can and then using rigid PVC going through all these uh, bulkheads. So forgive the mess here, but we have this vertical uh, rigid PVC and that essentially goes up to a Y in there, which I'll show you in a minute. And then you can see where one's coming out. I have a piece of wood in there. That's how I was measuring exactly where I needed to go through the next bulkhead. Uh, I, I would do that to mark the bottom side of the inside of the pipe. Now I've already cut the hole through this particular bulkhead, which is where the vent will go that, that feeds the air conditioning and heat into this double bunk. I have cut a um, hole through this particular bulkhead and I just drilled a hole through the one here that goes up into the V berth and now I'm going to go forward and actually cut the hole out from there where I have more room to do it a little neater. I'm now about to go up into the V berth which is Cade's room and we're going to uh, essentially cut a round hole there and the thought is I will run the PVC from the V berth back that way I can have one solid piece and won't have to put it together in segments between these bulkhead walls. You are my bunnies. And they're so cute and so fuzzy. Watch this. Watch. Watch. That was the one over across from Is that very cool? Sure. Are you going to point to me so I know? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to use this as a template to figure out how big a hole I need to do in the bulkhead. So I'm going to use a pair of calipers. Um, I think calipers, if I can find them. If not, I'm going to use a piece of string with a nail in it. So I've drilled a hole in the wall, and I'm going to measure the distance from the center of this hole to the outer edge, the radius. So once the hole was cut in the bulkhead, it was time to cut the length of the ductwork and then insert it from the V berth backward through the bulkhead walls and connect them all together. And here's what it looks like when it's done. This is the new ventilation. One of the things you've likely noticed in the salon is the lack of cabinet doors. And as we varnished and put up the new ceiling, Deb has been working on actually varnishing each of the doors. They're not easy. They uh, are lattice work, so it's a very intricate um, varnish job, and it's really easy to sort of get runs that go in between those components of the lattice work. So uh, you'll notice up on the uh, galley table, she has a, a, a cover down there and then some spacers to keep the... Uh, varnish from going down onto the surface and then ultimately just um, varnishing each of these particular doors. Um, she does three to four at a time, lets them dry overnight, and then we install them the next day. So it's been a bit of a slow process. Um, probably half of them are done, but we still have more to go. It's a baby gecko that's all on his own without his mother's help oh and God. dad's help, but he doesn't need help. Look at him. Touch him because he'll go running through here and then the cats will eat him. Well, good Saturday morning, everybody. We're back down on the boat. I traveled for work this week, so I didn't get a lot done on the boat at all this week during the week. Uh, last weekend, you saw us wrapping up just a little earlier in this video as we finished putting ductwork in both the double bunk stateroom as well as the forward Viva stateroom. Uh, the nice thing is getting that going. I still haven't put decorative grates on or anything like that. I really want to sort of test it out and make sure that my duck size is right and the distribution of uh, heat and cool air up there is, is what I want it to be versus what it is here in the salon. So, so far so good. I'll continue to test that before I finish out the decorative work. Um, my goal today was to come down on the boat and go into the forward V berth and start to uh, tape up and insulate the ceiling, right? Uh, we're going to do very much like we did in this salon. We're going to do a ceiling in there. I need to start working on the insulation piece of it. Yeah, this V berth bunk is just a disaster right now, but I do need to go ahead and insulate this ceiling, which I'm going to go ahead and pop the pieces up there. And I think what I'm going to do is down here on the sides where I remove this, I think I'm going to put insulation in there and I'm going to use the planks that we used on the ceiling and the salon in there. Well, I was only able to do about half the ceiling before I ran out of that uh, aluminum tape. I'll have to pick up some more. It's something I've been putting off for a while that I just have to get done. Uh, it's a little bit dreaded. If you have a boat, you've dealt with this. It's not fun. But... Yeah, I gotta get something done here. Dun 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 dun. Yep, it's the head. 
So this head started showing signs of a need for maintenance just before we put it in the yard. We've not moved aboard, so it's not been a huge deal, but it has been obvious as we've been down here working that we're going to have to do a little bit of work on it. Deb and I are both really big fans of an electric flushing macerating toilet in a boat. Uh, I know it takes additional power. People have many opinions on this, uh, but we've enjoyed them. We have one in, uh, in Last Affair, our Gulf Star 43, and we put one in this boat about three years ago. You may have saw the video when we actually installed the, the head here in this boat. Um, specifically, the brand we use is a Raritan Marine Elegance regular size porcelain bowl and essentially what this is is a marine flushing head and when you when you flush the toilet it it has a macerator for non-boating people especially essentially like a garbage disposal down inside the bottom of the toilet so it has a macerator and a pump that extra, uh, extracts every any of the material that's in the bowl itself and in our case we actually have an electrosan it's a marine sanitation system uh, you know a little bit like your municipal supply in your local town but in a very small scale on a boat so that you can uh, flush the heads and it, and it does all the things to reduce the parts per million to an acceptable discharge level and ultimately discharges it out over the boat however in order for that to work there are what they call joker valves essentially think of this like a check valve it's a little duck bill valve that fits inside of the lines and what it does is when water is flowing this direction that duck bill valve opens and when um when it's finished and there's no more pressure it seals back up and it prevents water from flowing back the other way as you can imagine that's important you flush the toilet you do not want any of that material in the pipes to sort of work its way back up into the bowl and what we have been noticing is when we flush the head, the water level sort of maintains right at a certain level in the bottom of the bowl. And over time, over an hour or so, it will raise a few more inches. So that uh, joker valve is just gotten loose and it's not sealing real tight there and it's letting some of that water flow back into the bowl. So let me show you what those duckbill valves look like or joker valves, and then I'll kind of show you how we'll go about replacing them. And you guessed it, it's a crappy job. So this particular head actually has two of these and I ordered them directly from Raritan, that's the manufacturer of the head. Uh, you can typically find these aftermarket um, by a couple of other companies. However, I've noticed that if, you, if you'll notice on here, uh, you'll see that this is a three-way or a triangle-shaped valve at the top. You see that? Because this is what the manufacturer uses, I figured it'd be better to go ahead and replace it with that. This particular head requires two of these, and I'll kind of show you what these look like. Essentially, this is going to fit right inside of the pipe, and um, and as you can see, when the water goes through this way, it essentially opens it up and allows any of the material to flow through. But if water was to try and flow backwards, it just sort of hits up against that and, and helps hold that shut. So these just get old over time, right? And the rubber loses some of its stiffness and you know, essentially you end up with a, a little tiny opening that doesn't close all the way. And the consequence of that is you know, water sort of flows back into that slowly. So um, let's go see what we gotta do to take this head apart and start replacing these. Um, I haven't replaced them actually on this boat before. So if you think about that, that's a pretty extensive life on these. That's almost three years of us living on board uh, before we brought it to the yard. So three full years of um, two of us full time and a year and a half of that um, with four of us with the girls on board too. And single head, the back one we just use as a closet storage. So one bathroom, that's a that's a lot of flushes, and, and quite frankly, these things hold up pretty well. Uh, the downside is it's you know it's not a fun job, right? When I disconnect these lines, some of this water is going to flow out. Um, before I started this, I actually flushed just plain water down through the toilet, probably 25 times, and treated it. Essentially, my thought was I'm going to take all that just pure and clean water and continue to flush it all the way through the system and discharge it out overboard. So if there is any bleed back that comes in from the lines. It should just be the water that's flushing through with sadly any other residue left in the hoses and that's the part that's kind of gross. So we'll get a pail and a bucket and some rags and uh, we'll get this head kind of pulled off of its base and get to replace them. And, and just took a, a screwdriver here and loosened them up to remove these. Once those are removed, we're able to lift the seat off of here, which makes it a lot easier to get in here and do a little bit of work. Thank you. 
I now have this lifted up off the base. I'm using just an old uh, Starbucks iced tea cup, and I'm gonna use that to pop underneath the lime when I pull the, um, the hose clamp off because this is exactly where the first of those joker valves are. Let's see if I can show this here. This is actually where I just disconnected this piece here. This is the discharge from the toilet itself, from the macerator, and it goes right into this line, which is the one that goes ultimately to the waste treatment system. And this right here is that duckbill valve. I'm trying to do this without making too big a mess here. I went ahead and removed these parts, and let me show you what it looks like. This is what is sitting inside of the head, and it kind of sits just like this. This lower side here is what comes right off the back of the macerator pump. So the water comes up and, and in the direction of my finger, and then ultimately goes around this curve up top, and that's the discharge line. In our case, that goes out to the electrosan. In some boats, that would go you know, to a discharge or a holding tank. Um, this valve, the joker valve, is what sits right down inside of the fitting that goes on the discharge line. And what's going to be interesting is I want to show you this. Remember I was saying how these sort of wear out and they, they don't close all the way? That's the old one, and there is the new one. And you can see just the difference of these. Um, yes, that's gross stuff on there, but it's part of, unfortunately, boat maintenance. Um, so yeah, clearly this needs to be replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and take that one out. And also there is another one right here. And this one goes again in the flow of, uh, the direction of the flow of the water. So we'll pull this one out and we'll pop it up in there as well. The first one I'm gonna do is uh, remove this inside lining. And this is just here to keep this from collapsing under any kind of pressure. So um, again, you can really see just how rough that is compared to what it should be. And then here's the, the good one. So it's pretty amazing um, you know, the ammonia that happens to be in urine really does form a calcium buildup and as gross as this is you can really see that buildup in there this is why a lot of people will recommend using vinegar uh, in their head they'll flush some vinegar in there or let some vinegar soak in there it does a good job of clearing some of this out so clearly we need to do that on a more frequent basis um, because what that's doing is just like your arteries with cholesterol, that is filling that up. And over time, these pipes get more and more narrow. The nice thing about this particular head is you can actually run three quarter inch discharge line. We have inch and a half. So there's a lot of room for calcium buildup to not necessarily impact the, the working, uh, how well this works, but I still don't want to chance it. So I'm gonna pop that piece right down inside of there. Again, that's my security piece and this goes right inside of there and over the discharge line so we'll put that on in a few minutes set that there the next one we now need to do is this one over here and there could be some water that comes out of this so i'm going to be cautious here and just like the other one you can see just how rough that one is so this also needs a new one and we will install our new valve right in here. So now it's just a matter of connecting this back onto the actual uh, discharge side of the macerator pump, and then uh, putting this down inside of the discharge line and tightening this up over it, and then remounting the toilet. The irony of all this work is, frankly, it's gonna take longer to remount the toilet back in its location than it did to actually replace these, uh, these joker valves. Let me install this uh, discharge line and Get to mount in the head again. I now have the toilet mounted back in. Shockingly enough, it went in really easy. So I'm just going to take out some of my tools. So I've had the toilet mounted back in. It actually went in shockingly easy. I'm pleased with the results. I'll show you how well those work in a few moments. And I think what I'm gonna do is right here underneath these different control panels. I'm going to install the uh, treatment button as well. I uh, didn't install it before because I was going to have it hooked up to the flush every time you flushed it treated, but we'd actually have two different buttons. You have to flush and treat. So I'll just mount the buttons right below the flush panel. I now have everything put back together in the head. I've got the toilet seat on, I kind of cleaned up some of the mess I made where I installed the uh, treatment panel uh, behind the head as well as um, you know where I spilled any kind of liquid or water. So use a little bleach water, cleaned all that up. Let me show you what it looks like now that we're done. 
First thing you'll notice is now right below the flush panel, I now have the treatment panel. So once we actually flush the toilet, we just go ahead and push the treatment button and that goes ahead and starts the treatment. And you can see here that the, uh, the pre-treatment starting and ultimately it'll treat the waste. Fairly simple process. You'll notice the water level is fairly low in the bowl. I'll press the flush button. It'll add some water to the bowl, ultimately discharge. I'm not having to hit anything here. It discharges out the water and then it uh, you know, puts a calculated amount back into the bowl again. And the nice thing now is with that joker valve in place, you'll notice the water level stays right there. Before what was happening is that water level was increasing as it would sit there. So moving forward, the simple process for us after using the restroom is going to be press the flush button and then go ahead and press the waste treatment button. 